Warfarin is a commonly prescribed anticoagulant used in the prevention and treatment of thromboembolic disorders. Warfarin is widely prescribed, and from the time period of 1998 to 2004, the U.S. saw a 45% increase in warfarin prescription. With the aging population and increased projected prevalence of atrial fibrillation, the number of warfarin prescriptions is predicted to continue to increase. There are many challenges in regulating warfarin dosing. Traditionally, warfarin efficacy is evaluated via the prothrombin time. To be efficacious and safe, the INR for individuals on warfarin must be maintained in a narrow therapeutic window. Typically, the INR during warfarin treatment should optimally fall between 2 and 3 for most patients, although the target INR may vary depending on indication for treatment. Once the INR rises above the therapeutic window, the patient is susceptible to major bleeding complications, especially for INR values greater than or equal to 4. If the INR falls below the therapeutic window, this indicates that the individual is not receiving effective warfarin therapy and is at risk for thrombotic complications. Bleeding and thrombotic complications are most likely to occur within the first few weeks of initiation of warfarin treatment. Amongst prescribed medicines, Warfarin is the most commonly implicated medication in U.S. emergency department visits. When this information was published in 2007, there were approximately 177,500 ED visits for adverse drug events annually, with warfarin-related ED visits contributing to approximately 30,000 of these events. From the time period of 1993 to 2005, and based on data from the FDA's Adverse Event Reporting System, Warfarin-associated cases had rates of 86% for bleeding with serious outcome and 10% for fatal bleeding. Compared to other drugs, warfarin has a high frequency of adverse events with a high frequency of serious and fatal outcomes. Regulating warfarin dosing can require multiple titrations to achieve a stable target INR. As shown here, most individuals require about 5 mg of warfarin per day. However, a significant percent of individuals require lower doses or higher doses of warfarin. Lower doses, as shown on the left side of the graph, are associated with warfarin sensitivity, whereas higher doses of warfarin are associated with warfarin resistance. Genetically, we understand more about warfarin sensitivity than warfarin resistance. This pie graph shows the contribution of different factors to warfarin dosing variability. Approximately 30 to 35% of warfarin dosing variability is due to genetic variation, especially variation in the vcor c one and CYP2C9 genes. Other factors contributing to warfarin dosing variability include weight, age, drugs, diet, comorbidities, smoking status, and other unknown factors. Here you can see that CYP2C9 and VCORC1 are involved in pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic processes of warfarin response, respectively. Pharmacokinetics has been touted as what the body does to the drug, whereas pharmacodynamics is what the drug does to the body. The left side of the figure depicts the pharmacokinetic processes and shows that warfarin is given as a racemic mixture of R and S warfarin. S-warfarin is the more potent form of warfarin and is mainly metabolized by hydroxylation by the cytochrome P450-2C9 or CYP2C9 enzyme. The right side of the figure depicts the pharmacodynamic processes and shows that the main target of both R and S-warfarin is vitamin K epoxide reductase, or V-core. V-core is encoded for by the V-core C1 gene, Inhibition of VCOR by warfarin results in keeping vitamin K-dependent clotting factors in the inactive state. As mentioned in an earlier slide, CYP2C9 and vcor c one are the two main genes known to be involved in warfarin dosing variability. CYP2C9 has two common alleles that lead to decreased enzymatic activity, known as STAR2 and STAR3. Both of these alleles are characterized by amino acid missense changes. VCOR C1 has a single nucleotide polymorphism in the promoter region of the gene 
that results in a decrease in promoter activity, leading to decreased production of the V-Core protein. Because of the relatively high contribution of genetics to warfarin dosing variability, the FDA relabeled warfarin in August 2007 to recommend pharmacogenetic testing of CYP2C9 for warfarin therapy. A second label update was issued in January of 2010, whereby the label was updated to include the effects of v c one as well as provide pharmacogenetic-guided dosing ranges. The allele frequencies of the common alleles in CYP2C9 and v c one are depicted here. You can see that they are fairly common across the Caucasian population. The v c one promoter polymorphism is believed to contribute to the majority of warfarin sensitivity in the Asian population. Other alleles, in addition to CYP2C9, STAR2, and STAR3, are present in the African-American population, but at this time they are not routinely measured in some laboratories. As mentioned earlier, the FDA updated the warfarin label in 2007 and 2010 to provide caution related to warfarin sensitivity. In 2010, they included a table shown here, which provides genetic guided dosing ranges. Across the top is the CYP2C9 genotype, with STAR1 being wild type or normal. Along the left side of the table is the VCOR C1 genotype. You can see that individuals with a combination of genotypes leading to warfarin sensitivity, as depicted in the right side of the table, will be expected to require lower doses of warfarin. There are many technology options for genotyping in the clinical lab. However, only a handful of tests have been 510K cleared for pharmacogenetic testing related to warfarin therapy. These are listed here and include the Nanosphere Veragene Platform, approved in September 2007, the Autogenomics Infinity Platform, approved in January of 2008, the Paragon DX Gentris RT-PCR Platform, approved in 2008, the Osmotech eSensor Platform, approved in July of 2008, and the Trimgen EQ-PCR Light Cycler Platform, approved in February of 2009. Many different agencies and groups have produced differing guidelines and recommendations for warfarin pharmacogenetic testing. In 2008, the American College of Medical Genetics provided their support for warfarin pharmacogenetic testing if performed within the first three days of prescribing and prior to initiation of therapy in orthopedic patients. Also in 2008, the College of American Pathologists stated that they believe there is ample evidence to support warfarin pharmacogenetic testing, at least for some patients. But in that same year, two other organizations, the American College of Chest Physicians and the American Society of Hematology, did not lend their support to warfarin pharmacogenetic testing until randomized clinical trial data was available that indicated the benefits of such testing. In August 2009, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services announced that Medicare would not reimburse warfarin pharmacogenetic testing except in the setting of randomized control trials. In 2010, the National Academy of Clinical Biochemistry submitted their statement endorsing warfarin pharmacogenetic testing. Thus, considerable variability for guidelines and recommendation exists among professional organizations and government agencies. In 2010, the results of the large Medco-Mayo warfarin effectiveness study were published. This study evaluated hospitalization rates in patients beginning warfarin therapy with genotyping versus historical controls who did not have genotyping. What the study found was that patients whose warfarin dosing was guided by genotyping had 31% fewer hospitalizations for any reason, and hospital admissions for thromboembolism or bleeding were 28% less frequent in the genotype group. Therefore, the results of this study support warfarin pharmacogenetic testing from a clinical outcome standpoint. In summary, polymorphisms in CYP2C9 and VCOR C1 account for most of the inter-individual genetic variability in warfarin dosing. There are a handful of FDA 510K cleared tests available for warfarin pharmacogenetic testing. Warfarin dosing tables and algorithms based on genotype and other factors are also available. As far as guidelines and recommendations for warfarin pharmacogenetic testing by professional organizations and government agencies, there is considerable variability amongst these groups. 
However, prospective randomized controlled trials could be helpful in answering some of the remaining questions regarding warfarin pharmacogenetic testing utility.